Chuck, we're back. Yes. Yeah. What I do we got? Topic for you. All okay. right. Uh, what do Zoom calls and Einstein's theory of relativity have in common? <laughs> Um, no one knows how either of them actually work. <laughs> that's a good answer. I'm going to say that's got to be the answer. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good answer. So here you go. You ready? Okay, let's do it. Uh, what we learned, what we affirmed in Einstein's theories of relativity is that space cannot be thought of just as space. Time is a fundamental coordinate right alongside space. Right. So that when you ever want to think about events, phenomena, past, present, future, you have to think of space-time. You right. can't just think of space or time as separate things. And there's an entire set of equations that fold the two together. That's, see, now that's, the, the first part I am so cool with, I like literally get it, you know? But when you talk about proving it mathematically, I'm still just well, that's flabbergasted. That's how you know it's going to be tight. That's all. Yeah, that's of how course, because it, yeah, it keeps it keeps moving. It keeps working keeps when it tight. when the math works. It, it works. Yeah, it that's works. Cool, right. Man. Okay. So, um, let us for those who might still be uncomfortable with the space time concept. What you don't know, perhaps, is that you live that way. Mm -hmm. There's no other way you you live. It's so intuitive, you think it's complicated, but it's easy. So if I say to you, Chuck, you ready? Okay. Yep. I say, uh, Chuck, uh, let's have lunch tomorrow at noon. I would say, oh my God, as long as you're paying, <laughs> okay. that is such a wonderful <laughs> offer. Okay. Chuck, it's on me. Let's have lunch tomorrow at noon. What is your next comment back to me? Where? Where, where, where do you want to eat? Where do you want to eat? Because the yeah. time alone was insufficient for, for your life and my life to intersect. Time is alone will not make that happen. You also have to give a spatial coordinate. Right. Is it the diner on the corner of, you know, Hollywood and Vine at 12 noon? So you have right. a space coordinate and time coordinate so that we can both meet. Right. Okay. It's Le by the way. Leave it to you to give me a coordinate where you know I can't get to. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. So, 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 so watch. If you go to the diner at a corner of Hollywood and Vine. Right. Yesterday, and I go there tomorrow, we were in the same place. We were. But not right. at the same time. Okay. Doesn't work. Okay. We're both in the same place, but not at the same time. Right. Okay. Which which is what I call Neil's favorite lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck, yeah, you were here yesterday. Good. Okay, so now watch. <laughs> so now you're at the diner in the corner, and I'm at, right. well, this works with Starbucks. You're in that Starbucks. I'm in a different Starbucks. Okay. We're at the same time, but not at the same place. Right. Yes, yeah, so it's the same brand, but it's a different location. Yeah, but it's a different location, yeah. Okay, so you need to be at the same place and at the same time for anything to happen where you have two things that want to coordinate together. Right, okay. Okay, all right. So how does this manifest? Let's go in the universe and there's an asteroid headed towards Earth. You could do the Bruce Willis thing and what? Blow it up. Blow it out of the sky, right. which it takes a lot of wasted energy, or you can deflect it. Mm, well, how do you a, deflect not a an good asteroid? Movie. Not a good movie. You, <laughs> how do you deflect an asteroid? So here it is. If you left it alone, it will collide with Earth, which means it will be in the same place at the same time that Earth is sometime in the future, at some point in the future. Okay? So what I can do is I can speed up the asteroid. Oh, I love that. Which then, you're, you're, oh, you speed Speed it up, then it yeah. gets to that location in my orbit before I do. Exactly. So it's at the we exist at the same time, but we're not in the same place. That's a whole have, that's a whole nother way to look at deflecting an asteroid. That's what's going on when you deflect an asteroid. That's awesome. 
Or you could slow it down. Then right. we get to that point before it does. We keep moving and it goes right on by behind us. Oh, man. It's the proverbial um, mental uh, uh, exercise that everyone does when they have a car accident. If only I hadn't forgotten my keys. If only I had left a little bit earlier. Then I would have never been in had that spot at that time that, for exactly the, for the drunk driver. Correct. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It's a mental calculation you do. Right. Right. And and it works in simple ways that we don't even talk about, but it's so simple. You cross the street. Five minutes later, a bus drives down the street. You didn't say, "Oh my gosh, I was old, I was almost hit." No, you. <laughs> you <didn't. laughs> oh, you're a bit of a drama queen. You know that, right? right. <laughs> Oh my wait, God, wait, I was wait. almost hit by a bus. Did you see that? <laughs> what? No, it came by here five minutes ago. It was just <laughs> barreling, just barreling down the street. It was street in the like, same spot I, I was, was in. right there. <laughs> I could have died. <laughs> right. You would not have died. And by the way, in relativity, we call these world lines. Your world, world line lines. is where you are in space and time, which is always in motion. Right. Because time as a, even if you're sitting there on your butt, right. you're moving right. forward in time. Right. By the way, uh, this affects time machines. All right? If so I give you a time machine and you say, okay, you want to go um, uh, into the future. How far do you want to go in the future? Oh, I'm going to go at least 200 years just to see if we're still here. Okay, but suppose you say, all right, I don't want to land in the winter. Let me land in the summer. So I'm going to go 200 years in six months, okay? Okay. Let's say, because we're recording this. It's cold outside right now. Right. So you do that. All right, so you go we'll go in your time machine, go 200 years, and then you walk out of the time machine, you will suffocate in the vacuum of space. Mm. Because, oh, because Earth, Earth is not, is not just spinning, place. it's moving while it's spinning. Okay, so, so you will land in the same spot that Earth was in its orbit, which is a different place than where it is six months from now. Oh, man. Which tells you a time machine can only work if it's a space-time machine. That's right. That's pretty awesome. You want to move to a location in time and a location, and a location, in, location space. in space. Correct. Right. All right. So. Oh, wow. That is really cool because. Okay. Yeah, so now watch. Yeah, yeah, watch yeah. how this plays out. Right. Are, we, are we on the same page now? I'm, I don't want to move I'm, forward I'm, I'm, until I hear, Neil, I'm with you. I am riding this wave with you, buddy. Okay. Okay. So. Um, under normal circumstances, I'm in my office three or four days a week. I travel a lot. Um, there are seminars and colloquia. Scientists come through to the, the department and they give talks. Mm -hmm. You know, if I'm around, I'm going to attend those talks because they're good. They learn about the latest breaking discoveries made by my colleagues. Okay. So we get we have maybe three or four talks a week in our division at the American Museum of Natural History. I used to make maybe one of those a week. All righty. However, during COVID, I was making four out of four talks a week. Okay. Why? Because Zoom calls broke the space-time alliance. So that now you only have to be at the same time. time. And you do not have to be at the same place. Interesting. As a result, world lines can split and only conjoin on the time coordinate, rendering the space coordinate irrelevant. Mm, but that is why probably more people attending more conferences, seeing more meetings than ever before. You can I no mean, longer no. use an excuse. Oh, I'm on a, on a business trip. I can't come in. Zoom in. We had you on the Zoom call. I know. It's an electronic leash is what it is for most people. And that's how, Chuck, you spent how many months you were filming Brain Games for National Geographic. You're yes. their new host in their new season, yet you didn't lose a bit of this schedule. Your background was different because you were recording with us via Zoom right. through your hotel yeah. rooms and other setups. That's right. And so, so... We, you were still participating because your world line didn't need the space coordinate. That's true. And yeah. so this is the relationship between Zoom calls and Einstein's theory of relativity. 
that is a uh, that's pretty wild, and um, in a way, I have a new respect for Zoom now. Uh, <laughs> for breaking the space, space time continuum. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like who knew Zoom was so damn sci fi. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's so, pretty. That's, yeah, I love it. No, I in all it. fairness to prior means of communicating that, that predates Zoom, the telephone was kind of like that. Yeah. All right. And by the way, do you know what the word caller meant before there was a telephone? Um, it was a visitor to you front to your front door. I was going to say um, a handsome gentleman, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, you have a gentleman caller at a the gentleman. front door. Oh, I do believe you have a gentleman caller. Yes, exactly. That's the <laughs> meaning of that, with the original meaning of that word. And then mm -hmm. Alexander Bell invents a telephone. And so what word are you going to use when you show up at the front door of the telephone line? It's a caller. It's a caller. And now that's we've been that way for 100 and, you know, 30 years or whatever. So we, no, 150 years now. So 1876 was the demonstration of the patent for the first telephone. Um, and so that put people together in time without having to be together in space. Wow. That's so so this is what this is our, one of the great achievements and advances in modern civilization. Uh, and, and Zoom just did it full up with voice and sound and audio quality and saved files and everything. It's it's really funny because the video call was purported to be the thing that would change everything in society. I, I remember seeing a video phone in 1964 World's Fair in New York. Wow. Like, wow, yeah. that's the future. And then you realize you call someone at six in the morning, they don't want you looking at their... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the people don't always want you looking at them anytime you happen to call them. What is that on your face? Don't look at my face. <laughs> Let's just have a call. Stop looking at my face. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can pre-schedule Zoom calls, and now you can get all dolled up and look all it's, purdy. You can look, look Zoom purdy. Yeah, you, you got, got to. That's pretty. Yeah, that's great though. I mean, it's it's. Uh, who knew that you could link this back to Einstein? I said you had a, <laughs> a a tough one, but you did it. You linked it back to Einstein somehow. <laughs> and now you know with asteroids, we're just changing his world line. Yeah. Which, by the way, that is the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. The fact that, I mean, you, and the idea is you don't even have to knock it off course. You can just speed it up or slow it down. That's because you always think of deflection as a change in the, going sideways. Uh, in the right, vector, right? right? right You're right. going a well, different. Well, a vector is direction and speed. And speed. Technically, right. a, a vector has both of those components. So if you right. change its direction or you change its change speed, you speed. have changed its velocity that, the velocity you know. is the com combination of those nice. two so it's exactly so right so it's but that's great it's like that i mean i am less scared of asteroids now no, <laughs> no still be scared i don't want I, that was not the point of this explanation oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> by the way a velocity vector is motion that has direction and 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 speed as part of okay. it like the asteroid right right so you can change its direction or change its speed or both Either of those are changing the Change. velocity of the asteroid. Okay, so now watch. You can do that. So with a car, there are three ways to change its velocity. Right. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, and you can hit a wall or another car. <laughs> Ideally not. Uh, okay. You can slow down. <laughs> that reduces its speed. You right. can accelerate, increase its speed, or you can change direction. Okay. All three of those can help you avoid an accident. Right. It's not just how good your brakes are. Do you have a place to steer so that your world line does not fully intersect with the one that would cause the accident? Uh, you know what? As a person who rides a motorcycle, you just explained how you stay alive on a bike. Those are the three things that are your friend that they teach you all the time. The first is acceleration. Get up and get out of the way. The second is being able to brake properly. But now motorcycles have anti-lock brakes, so that used to be a big deal, not so much. But the most important is being able to maneuver. Yes. So, you, you know, to, to, to be able to... And motorcycles are particularly nimble in that regard. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right, right. Super cool. There you go. Okay, Chuck, got to call out of quits. All right. All right. That All was right. great. That, that's that was been fun. yet another Star Talk explainer. 
Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up.